Hello, and welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with OBIEE. This is the third part in importing ASO S-based databases into the repository. So we did a couple of things. We right-clicked the database, we went to Properties, and we determined what would our users see. Would they see member names by default or the alias? We turned off caching on the database itself for this particular data source. We also decided to convert products to a single hierarchy by right-clicking on the products dimension member and saying convert to single view was the choice. Now that we have it converted, of course, it toggles. So it says convert to multi-hierarchy. We could go back. We also changed our measures dimension to be a value-based hierarchy by right-clicking the hierarchy, going to properties, and changing the hierarchy type to value. One last change that we made is since we said we were going to have member names set on the database, we right click the database and we said create columns for alias tables and we selected the default alias table. So that begs the question, if I had multiple alias tables, could I create columns for all of those and my users could then pick which alias table they wanted to use when reporting? And the answer is, Absolutely yes, this is the way that you would do that, create multiple alias columns. So those are all the changes that we made. I'm now going to make just a couple more changes. Normally when I import a cube and I see the server name sitting up there, I will always change out that name. I will right click and I will rename that particular object. I just wanted to right click and change his name. And I normally just do an underscore at the tail end and change it to be the same name as my server up above. Now, why do I change these two names? I change the server name because I may want to import this cube again, but I don't want it to be part of this particular rollup. I want it to be in a completely different connection. So that's why I change this name. By changing this name, I can always go back to my file menu, import metadata, go through that process that we just went through to import the cube again. If I need to for some reason, let's say I, I added a generation to a hierarchy that was not set to value as its type, I could right click here, I can import metadata, re-import the cube, if I have to, but let's talk about when do I need to reimport the cube. If you set the hierarchy to value, the hierarchy type to value, then pretty much you're good to go. Almost all changes to the database will flow through, including generation changes. So you add a generation, you take a generation away. If you leave your hierarchy type at unbalanced, or ragged unbalanced rather, then when you add a generation, it does not flow through. When you add new members or delete members, those changes always flow through no matter what the hierarchy setting is. So a lot of people will change all their hierarchies to be value-based. Do be careful with that because sometimes that actually tends to confuse the users when they are, if they're used to seeing it in S base as kind of this is the parent, these are the children for that parent, these this is the parent, these are the children, and all of a sudden they just have this flat list that they're looking at. Sometimes that actually confuses them instead of helps them. So while setting it to value is a good thing and should certainly be used on hierarchies where you change generations frequently. I see it used a lot actually on the product dimension. I see it used a lot on organizational structures because you do tend to um, change organizations frequently. I also see it used um, obviously quite frequently on the account dimension, especially if it's a financial cube.
So at this point, this particular sample database is ready to go ahead and be moved over into our business model and mapping layer. And as you saw earlier, when I showed you what happens with those multiple hierarchies, when I already have a database called sample out there and I bring another one over, it appends the pound sign one. At this point in time, I can rename here in the business model and mapping layer, I can rename that database. So I called it ASO SAMP. And if I open it up, I can see everything inside. I can see the multiple hierarchies. So up top are the hierarchies, by the way, for OBI. If you've worked with relational data, you know that that's where you actually create your hierarchies and you see them up top. And then down here we have our logical columns. And notice again, one measure column. All my numbers are here in my gold standard bar there, okay? When it's a measure, it turns gold. When it's a hierarchy, you'll see steps. And OBI, just because we like to reuse the same terminology and means something completely different, if it's not a measure, which is a gold bar, and it's not a hierarchy, it's called an attribute column, which is very, it's considered to be flat. Thanks for watching and look for the other parts in this series on importing ASO databases into the repository.